when we do these little rectangles, we have to do them with the utmost care and utmost accuracy. Just because you're drawing a line with a pencil, freehand, does not mean that it can be inaccurate. It must be accurate. If you divide a space into quarters, then each of the quarters should be related to the shape of the paper. So, that at the moment is as accurate as I can make it. Just because I'm drawing it freehand, I still try to make it absolutely perfect as if I'm doing it with a ruler. So, here is your new best friend, your ruler, any ruler. Will so that should be ten and a half to get the halfway point. I'm quite a bit short of the halfway point here. So I'll make my next line here. And hmm, I can bring this line down to here. Now my recommendation is don't draw with pencil. This is based on something that I read some years ago. That pencil rises through your layers of paint. I'll take that lot out, that one out. But there's the nice thing about pencil, is you can erase it. So that's number one. We can draw this line, these lines, we can draw them freehand, or we can draw them. I wish I had the light coming from the other side, that would have been useful. We can draw them with a set square, or with a ruler. That's your other good friend, set square. Because we don't really want to work over pencil. We want to work over something which is indelible. Now, it's not guaranteed that this pen will be indelible under paint. Uh, sometimes the turpentine might dissolve it. I don't think it will. But more um, dangerously, fixative can dissolve it. Oops, sorry. Bad drawing there. Slip of the hand. Okay, let's draw, redraw that bit of line. When you make a mistake, restate the mistake. When you make a mistake, don't obliterate it. Not necessary. Mistakes are okay. It's just accurate. Doesn't mean perfect. The word accurate. Accurate means done with care. So here again. I'm not drawing this line with the ruler again, although I could. I find that the hand-drawn line has more of a sense of accuracy. And by that I mean more of a sense of caring than a ruled line. Okay. So far, so good. But now we'd like to put a circle inside here. Yeah. And we would like to make that circle perfect. That's not so easy, but done. So, there. Yeah. I don't like to use a compass because it leaves a hole in your canvas or in your paper. So I'd rather use a, a lid. This is just fish paste or something lid. I can't remember what it was. Maybe baby food. And then you draw your circle like that. Be careful about it. But don't worry about it. Swamini Sarasananda was my teacher. I'm going to put this one off center just for fun. Off center down there. He mentioned a house that he'd seen. I don't know if it was in India when he was a young man or a young boy, or if it was in Africa or. So it, it had a sign up, it said, be aware of the dog. 
I think we should put that sign up at our house for Newton. Because you don't have to be scared of Newton. You don't have to beware of the dog, but be aware. So, yeah, a nicer composition. Now, I'd like to rub out the excess of pencil lines. If it won't come off anymore, then you've probably done enough. I'll get rid of that one completely and that completely. I should also draw two extra rectangles there and there, but what I want to do now is just start on this one. This kind of mixing bowl is really intended for art students working with gouache or poster color, really the same thing, or watercolor. But I don't do that much work with poster color or watercolor, so I'm going to be using this for my oil paint. Just going to balance it on the edge there so it doesn't run away too fast. Now, I'm going to add some color to it. I've got lamp black here, which is a good black. And I've got Payne's Gray here, which is also essentially quite a good black. I'm going to put some of the Payne's Gray in there. Not too dark. And then I can apply, so... I'm learning this as you're learning this, okay, so I'm not sure what's going to happen. But I'm going to apply this color like this, like a watercolor wash, like a Turner color beginning like that. Whoa, look at it run. Much too fast and I don't have any cloth near it. There's always uh, something in this. I've got some toilet paper there. That will help to wipe up the excess there. That excess there. Let's put the paint's gray down like that. Now, the advantage of doing it in um, the Turner way is that it's completely transparent. And being completely transparent, that means that your, your, your lines, your lines that you did with the, the ballpoint pen show up perfectly. Okay, now that was to be expected. Now I have to do another experiment. I need to make this as flat as possible so that maybe if I'm lucky I won't have to repaint that section. I'm going to have a pale circle, this color, in a darker ground. Now, here's my problem now. I've got to wipe off this excess here. There. No, it doesn't matter. Untidy. I've got to work for perfection. But we can't always meet, meet perfections. I'll take my paint's grey like that and stir it in here. If you're mixing a lot of colour, and this should be a lot of colour, it's often better to do this with a palette knife, but no, no palette knife is going to fit into this little hollow. So if you want to work with a palette knife for your mixing, you'd have to work on your flat palette, your oil painting palette, which is fine. So I'll put some white out there as well, just so I can get to it. And take some of that white and mix it in here. Now this is where I have to start being very careful. I want to make sure that I've got enough paint here to cover the whole area, to cover that whole rectangle. If I don't, I'm going to have to remix some color and that would be bad. So, but I'm using only turpentine for this, still. That's better, better. Only turpentine, this one called Reynolds Genuine Artist Turpentine, which I make myself, I've got a lot of bottles like this, but always I buy the genuine turpentine and I decant it into a little glass bottle. Because I really, 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 really don't like plastic, plastic bottles. Okay. The turpentine's got the advantage, number one, of drying very, very quickly. That'll, that'll dry very fast. I 
This one dries slower because it's thicker. But still, even this should be dry by tomorrow. Overnight should be enough. Okay, let's try it. If I don't, if I don't do it right, my apologies. But I think I'm doing it right. Get right into the corner with a square tip and drag the paint across like that. You see, it looks at first glance as if, as if I'm covering up my ink lines, but I don't know. We'll have to see what happens at second glance. There. My brush, my brush is not mixed thoroughly. By that I mean that there's a little lump of black somewhere on the tip of the brush, on the edge of the brush. That's bad. Okay, now I'm coming over this. Oh dear. And my ink line is completely gone. Completely. No problem. With a lid or something like a lid, a coin, anything round base of a glass we can do this again all right so i want to get this paint flat it's quite dark nice color for the dark side get it nice and flat and into the corners and up to the lines up to the lines like that And when you try to make your color as flat as possible, work in horizontal strokes to get it flat, and then work in vertical strokes to get it flatter. And then come back with horizontal strokes again to get it even flatter. Something like that. So what I'm going to have to do in this one, I'm going to have to redraw re my circle. That's not the end of the world. It's easy to do with the with the lid that I've got here. And now, I'm not sure if this one's dry enough. I'll see if it smears. Good Lord, it's dry enough. That was so quick. That's just with the turpentine. So the turpentine has the advantage of drying very fast, very quickly. The other advantage is that it is, uh, that it smells very, very nice. And the third advantage, the main advantage, is that it doesn't, it doesn't make you sick. It doesn't kill you. It's not a poison. This turpentine, genuine turpentine, is made from pine trees, pine tree larch. The, the, the glue that sits on the side of the pine trees and people just take it off like that and they put it into a little tin can they heat up the tin can and then they lead the, the vapor out of the tin can into another little receiver and in between they try to cool that that, that thing down so that the vapor changes into liquid and then it drips on the other side for distillation when it drips down on the other side, it is pure turpentine, pure, genuine pine tree turpentine, also called sometimes turpentine oil. Now here I'm going to use a round brush. I was a little bit shocked that I don't actually have round oil painting brushes, so I'm using around watercolor brush it's just as good the only trouble is this brush won't work so well on watercolor after this so i'll have to be very careful how i clean this brush and that should cover the whole area now does it blend yeah
Always with on your edges. Oh dear. Look for your edges. A clean edge is a very difficult thing to get. This is pretty clean. Except just from now. Just there I made a bump. That's probably best to clean with a bit of turpentine while it's wet if I can. Mm. I'm going to run it a second time. I should have mixed a lot more. This is the way to do it. Okay, now you can see the technique of the old masters coming in here. Their paintings have this kind of surface. And the reason I think is because the square brush was only invented uh, towards the end of the, of the 19th century. When the impressionists already were established in their ways. Is that too pale? I'm not sure. No, it's right. It's the right color, but it's too runny. So I hope you'll join me in this exercise so that I don't have to suffer all these things alone. So the round brush is one of the secrets of the great masters like, for example, Sargent, one of my favorite examples, Sargent, Turner, Degas, Toulouse-Lautrec, Rembrandt, Vermeer, they didn't have flat brushes. Nobody knew how to make a flat brush. It's quite an achievement to make a flat brush. So once a flat brush was invented, or yeah, invented, made, manufactured, the more modern artists like you and me, and our forerunners, our teachers, went for the flat brush. And it is a very, very, very wonderful brush. So we've got an advantage over Turner and, uh, ah, there you go, there's one. Here goes another run. Uh, we've got an advantage over the artists of the 19th century. But that advantage can work against us. As I say, the square brush gives a sense of order to the painting, a sense of beautiful flatness. With the round brush, it has a sense of anarchy. You can't control it as nicely. You can't control the surfaces as nicely. So the round brush looks more like that. Now that's not flat. Now let me be quick to admit that I like that kind of surface. I like, I like the unevenness in the surface. I really do. But that's not the point. The point here is that we need to work to get a flat surface as flat as that one, using this technique. Okay, this would have been much easier if I'd mixed enough color to start with. Then I would have been able to get there, it's starting to work there. And also, I can work over it a second time. There. That's all flattening out much more beautifully. And the closer you get to perfect flatness, the more beautiful your texture will be. There will be texture, but your texture is now much more beautiful. It's like a sky, you see, like a night, like night and a moon and a night. So carry on. Here I'm picking up the paint on the side of this little bowl because it's a bit drier there. And then again, stroking and stroking and stroking. I'm not going to mess around with it. Painting right up to the very edges. That's not necessary. Oops. I went over the edges there because that's what happens if you try to work up to the edges. This will go over. It didn't really go. It did, did go over a tiny bit. So now again, yeah, pick up some more dryish color. And 
keep going, keep going, keep going. What I was going to say is, for this to get this one really, really, really flat, we would have to uh, essentially allow it to dry and then go over it in the same way that I'm going over it now. But it seems that the oil paint is quite happy to go into and over itself. So there's no problem with that. That colour inside there I could leave as it is. Dangerous. But why not live dangerously? Um, see, it's textured, but not too textured. This one is untextured. This is what I really want. And now in this one, See, I'm worried about that one because it is so pale that it looks like it's uh, the white paper underneath. But I'm not going to fuss with that now. I could have done the color darker to start with. The next one is I'll redraw that circle and then I'll come with this nice brush and I'll color the circle in, in a light color. A little bit darker than that. But now, should I take this enormous, shall we call it even stupid risk? of trying to mix that color so it's white plus the tiniest amount of paint spray now I've got to be exactly if I'm slightly out here it's going to be a disaster if I'm even slightly out so this color more white would have to if I'm going to do my stupid thing here would have to match that color perfectly otherwise it'll sit there like a soft thumb looks like I did it looks like I got it perfectly okay now Tiny little bump there, oopsie, take that one away, still, tiny little bump there, Ooh -wee. went over the other side, okay. Tiny little bump there, that one got itself to dark. Why? Put some more white into it. Now, come now. Much more white. It's gone dark. Okay. And just there. Now, more white. Come on. That's better. Tiny, another, another little bump on this outline of the circle. And that now is there, where it's not the inside of the circle that's got a bump going out. Sorry, it is the inside of the circle going out. So now I've got to go back to my original color here. This one. If I can get it. This is all very random. I'll take away that bump. There. That's just about a perfect circle. Very close. Okay, so there's the Payne's Grey, which is like a turquoise when you look at it on the palette. A clever colour, but not really grey. So, anyway. I'll take some white and mix some white into that. Now, now I'm using my palette knife, which is much wiser. Then in yesterday's session, I was, I was working with uh, a lot of turpentine to make it pale. Now, I'm very keen to make this colour more beautiful, but I don't want to do it now. Not in not in this project that I'm busy with at the moment. I, I want a darkish 
gray, two grays, two tones of Payne's gray. Now that really should be enough. If it's not enough, well, that will be too bad. So I'm mixing this color a lot darker than the circle that I had in the first example. And uh, I'm going to be applying it, painting it, with, uh, with this round brush. The thickness that, the, uh, that I mix it here with my palette knife, that's the thickness that I'm picking up on my brush. And so, ooh, no man. That's much too dark, that won't show up at all. Okay, I'm going to add some more white. I want it to, to be so very, 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 very close. I want it to be a very subtle color shift. Okay, add more white into it. Yeah. Because the first one I did was one way. The color was put on as a wash. In this one, the first color was put on the dark color, it was put on a solid color, solid paint. And so the, the, the white bit there, or the pale bit there, was put on as a wash. Now I'm going to put it on as solid paint, thickish paint. All right, let's try again. This should show up enough. Yeah, that's what I want. A subtle shift. And I would really like to paint right up to the line and a fraction over the line. I'm going to do a lot of variations of these and I'd like you to do it as well. Monochrome painting does not mean black and white painting or grayscale painting. Monochrome painting means done in one color. Now that one color can be anything. You can do a monochrome painting in red. I'll give you a nice example now. Monochrome painting was what, what the youngish Picasso did. Picasso did a blue period. That was paintings done in blues only, blue plus white. That was his blue period. Yeah, so far so good. But I'll put a bit of color in the middle here. Just to give myself courage for the next bit. Very difficult. Very, very, very difficult. And what I was doing, I was stupid because what I should have done, take a tiniest bit of turpentine in here because a bit tacky of coming off the brush. Um, I should have kept this first color that I did, this one, the background color, or foreground color, whichever that is. There. Hmm. Looks like a nice half moon. Another bit of turpentine. Just to get it right. And then around there. Mm-hmm. Okay. Not too bad. Then I can still do this bit. Ah, don't want to go over the line. You see, if I go over the line. I could make repair so easily if I still had this color. But I don't have this color anymore, so what I should have done, I should have mixed the color in a bowl as I did, but a lot of color, more than I did. And then at the end of the session, I should have covered it with a lid of any kind. I don't like plastic, so I won't use I won't use um, what is that f plastic thing that we put over the thing? Anyway, I won't use that. But I can probably use a a, a, a real lid, you know, like a little bottle lid. Have it in a, in a shallow bottle and put a lid on it with a little bit of medium in there to keep it for longer. Okay. 
Now, this is not really the way to do a demonstration because it's going to be upside down now. But to get to that side, there's no way you can hope to paint that correctly. So you turn this thing upside down and you just check that I'm more or less in the right space. I'm going to move it across a little bit like that. And another bit of turpentine in there. Now I can get to see there already I went slightly over the line. It's very difficult. That's very, very, very difficult. And it's one of the things that I would like you people to learn. You people, you and me, us people, to learn that difficult is what art is. Art is a very difficult thing. This is why I pick, uh, Plato. Plato defined art as skill. It's not a good definition. Art has much more to do with feeling and emotion and insight and spirit and soul than with mechanical skills, but it also includes skill. So, don't go over the line and don't allow any of the line to show after you've painted the color. So don't go only halfway over the line. Obliterate the line, there must be no line. It must just be a field of color meeting another field of color. That's what we want. And this takes enormous patience, which is probably a better word than skill. Enormous patience. Okay, let's see if we can do this last bit in one smooth stroke. It looks like I can't, because I can still see the, 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 the line, the dark line of the, pe the pen. Patience, patience, patience. Slow, 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 slow. Okay, that looks rather nice. Better than that one because it's a better color. Now I just have to look at it very, very carefully. I think there's a little bit of dark line still showing there. Get rid of that. One. Get rid of that. Okay. Okay, and then there's a little bump there. It's not the end of the world because I've got more of my uh, original color. better put some more out. I don't have enough there. But my... I only got two colors in here. It's Payne's gray and it's white. Nothing else. So for me to try and mix this color, the color around the circle, test this color here. Yeah, that looks right. So now I'm going to turn it not quite upside down because I want to get the precise side of the brush there looks like I mix my color exactly right there's also another little bump just there and if I can find any other ones I should get rid of them now but ooh, it's a little bit dark there make it a little bit lighter little bit dark. That's the color. Painstaking. 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 Is a concept. It means taking pains. 
Einstein gave a definition of genius. His definition of genius was genius is the capacity to take infinite trouble. Taking pains. Okay. All right. That one will do now. So now for the next one, I'm going to do another one there and then another one there. Let's talk through this one. What I want to do here is do a new color, and that color will be the color that I like so much what Paints Gray can give you, but you can get in other ways as well, because Paints Gray is just a mixture of some other colors that already we have. Uh, I will use Paints Gray plus Burn Sienna to mix a warmer gray version of Paints Gray, a warm Paints Gray, and that will be beautiful. So that brownish gray will be the same gray for the light one and for the dark one. And I might also reverse the whole thing. I might make the, the, the rectangle pale, oopsie, and the, and the circle dark. And in another one, I might try something like a silver. This is quite silvery. Maybe I'll try a gold or something here and make a circle light, so on, so on. That's the thing. Play with it. Play with it. This is joyful work. It's, it's something you should enjoy and have fun with. And remember, work on scraps of uh, the, the paper that you get inside sketchbooks. Painting books, painting pads, layout, lay, not layout pads, but layout pads. And this is an A4, no bigger than that, so you can do a lot on here. If I do two of these sheets, I'll have done eight exercises. I might stop at four, but I'll probably do six, knowing myself. That, that is what I think I will do. Six of them. After we've done six, we'll move on to the next kind of thing. And that'll be, once we've mastered our tones, then we've got to do tonal scale. The tonal scale will be like a tonic sulfur, white, uh, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different tones, each one equal distance from the other one. It's like going, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. I don't know if I got it right or wrong, but the notes must be right. They must be perfect. The, 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 the spacing must be perfect. So we'll do that. So I'll do two more on a new page, like that, and then we'll do this tonal scale on um, next to that. The tonal scale is in the beginning of the study of tone as such. There's also, yeah, that's enough. Um, I'll, I'll show you something in the book by Andrew Loomis, his tonal plans, how you can work out how to plan a painting in terms of tone. Good luck, good work.